Hey guys, um, today I just want to do a one year review on my 2018 F-150. Uh, I want to talk about some of the pros and cons, uh, some of the good and bad, the issues I've had with it, um, how it's performed over the course of a year, gas mileage, some of the add-ons I've done to it, and we're just going to walk around and kind of talk about different features, different issues I've had with it, pros and cons. Um, so the front fascia has held up pretty well. I've had a few issues with rock chips. Um, the chrome, the chrome cladding in the front's held up well. I do do wax it every two to three months, so that's probably helped. Um, <clears throat> but overall, it's held up pretty well. Haven't had any issues with any chrome peeling or anything like that. As we come around the side, um, these Goodyear Wranglers that come on the truck typically get a, a bad wrap, um, but. I've actually had pretty good luck with them. The truck has approximately 21,000 miles on it and the tires have plenty of wear uh, left, plenty of tread left. They ride good, they don't make noise. I get, get good gas mileage with them. Uh, the only probably disappointing fact to them is, you know, I bought the FX4 off-road package and on the sticker it shows that these are supposed to be all-terrains. In reality, they're not, they're highway tires. Uh, but as far as the tire goes, they have done really well. Uh, the running boards are, are okay. Um, <clears throat> the, the black on them is very hard to keep black. They want to fade a lot. Uh, but as far as the material goes, the chrome and the plastic is, is holding up really well. I've just had an issue keeping them black. They kind of want to fade. Uh, as we make our way down the back of the truck, I added this UWS uh, toolbox. It's the matte black. Um, I looked around a good bit at these. Uh, Tractor Supply offers a pretty good one. A few other, there's a Husky one, as I think as well, it's pretty good. Um, those are typically a little bit shinier black. They're not the matte uh, powder coated black. And they don't offer the same uh, warranty. The UWS offers a lifetime warranty on their boxes. In fact, this is, truck is, uh, truck you know it's been in the back of a truck for about a year now sitting in the sun the black hasn't faded there's no chipping no cracking um, the only issue I've ever had with it was I loaded a four-wheeler in the back of this truck and the way we tied it down rubbed the front grate on the four-wheeler rubbed the front of the box and, and marred it a little bit but other than that I haven't had any issues with this box uh, the same thing it's I don't know if it's the plastic Ford uses or what but these bed rails um, I've back to black them and use synthetic wax and done everything I can to try to keep them black and new looking and they just don't want to hold up. They just keep fading and it keeps getting worse. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know what I, what I should use on these to keep them black and, uh, and hold up. I mean, they're not cracking or peeling or anything like that. It's just a cosmetic issue, but it is an issue nonetheless. And it's the same way with this, with this step here. You can see the difference in the, the color of the plastic versus the step versus the, the, the lid on the tailgate. Um, <clears throat> the step, as far as itself, works great. It pulls out, you drop it, it's easy to use, it supports a good bit of weight. Haven't had any issues with it. Um, but the plastic, like you can see, for some reason, it's a different type of plastic. And I've, I've done the same things. I've used the uh, back to black on it, the synthetic wax. And it, it's just not, it's just not holding its, its color very well at all. Uh, same thing with the step on the bumper. The chrome back here is held up very well. No chipping or, or peeling of the chrome or discoloration. But the same issue with the steps here. They're, they're kind of fading even though I've continuously tried to, tried to keep them black and, and new looking. Um, I bought a Reese hitch for it. Uh, <clears throat> the only the only downside to this is the uh, the truck is designed to hold a good bit of weight in the bed. I think this particular model has a little over 1,800 pounds of payload capacity. So when you hook up a, a lighter bass boat to this particular truck, it doesn't want to sit very much. So that kind of wants to tilt your boat up and it puts the lower unit on the, uh, on the motor down near the ground. Um, so if you do, if you look at it, one of these trucks and you, you know, you like these straight hitches, which I like because I don't have to worry about ball size. Um, you may end up having to get a drop hitch anyway. If you do have a, a, a light tongue boat that only has a couple hundred pounds of tongue weight. Um, 
make our way around. You can see the, I've had issues with the pain or anything like that. Um, I did have a rock hit the passenger side, uh, front, front window. Uh, these are actually laminated. Uh, so the, the glass didn't crack in the gazillion pieces. It was a pretty simple process. Uh, we brought it to a glass shop. They pulled the window out. They put a new one in. It took about 30 minutes. Um, uh, as far as as far as the engine goes, uh, if some of you that may do a little research on the 2018 5.0, you know some of them do have a, a tendency to burn oil. This one does burn a little bit of oil, but it's not bad. I change my oil about every 5,000 miles, and in those 5,000 miles, it burns about half a quart. Uh, I will do a dipstick, and I'll show you all the oil level, where it's at, where it was when I filled up the truck. All right, here we are in the engine bay of the 2018 uh, 5-liter F-150. Um, it's pretty standard, what you expect. It's got the the uh, reservoir for your coolant in the front, your battery, your main engine control unit. I do like that the, um, the washer fluid is uh, able to hold a gallon. So when you go into an auto parts store and you buy a gallon of washer fluid and it's empty, it'll take the entire gallon and you don't have to worry about keeping up with a quarter of a gallon or something like that. Uh, the air box I've kept factory. Um, <clears throat> I, I haven't looked at any type of air intake modifications because um, as an engineer, I think that the engineers knew what they were doing and designed it the way it was supposed to be designed. I run a motorcraft oil, uh, air filter and oil filter. Um, I don't know about the newer oil filters, but I know back in the early 5.4s and 4.6s, people were having trouble with lifter failure um, and cam issues because they were using aftermarket oil filters that didn't have, have the right drain back valve that kept the, the oil in the top of the engine. Um, newer oil filters may have solved that and you may get away with not using a motorcraft oil filter, but four calls for a motorcraft oil filter and that's what I use, it's FL500S. Um, as far as the oil I use, for a while I was using uh, motorcraft synthetic blend 5W20 to get the engine broke in. Um, that, in, that oil is a little light uh, for Louisiana. Uh, we have pretty hot summers. In the winter, I may go back to that. Uh, but in the summertime, I went to bits. I still use 5W20, but I went to a Rotella, uh, their new gas and truck oil. Um, it's a little bit higher on the, five, on the 20 weight scale, so it's a little bit thicker. Uh, not by much, but just a little bit. And it, um, I have noticed a little bit less valve train noise. Uh, my gas mileage, it may have gone up a percentage or two, uh, but that's not really why I did it. I mainly did it just for engine longevity. Um, we'll go ahead and do a dipstick test. I'll show you where it wasn't full whenever I did it. The way these new engines are designed, whenever it calls, so like this one calls for 8.8 .8 quarts. Uh, these new ones, that gets you to about halfway in the hatched area or between the marks whatever vehicle you're talking about. In this particular case, it's a hatched. Uh, we'll go ahead and stab it and take a reading. Wait a second. So you can see there, it's a little bit over the area and that is an issue with the new ones uh, giving false readings. This morning I checked it and it was probably about a quarter of a quart low, which is about where it was whenever I filled it up, whenever I initially did the change. Now it's showing a little high because the, the, uh, of the way the engine holds a lot of oil in the, in the top of the engine. So you just need to be careful in, in how you read it and consistently read it at the same time. So typically I don't, I don't check it after it's been running for a while. Um, because it gives me a different reading than if it's been sitting overnight. Um, so whenever you're checking your oil and you think you might have an issue with oil burning, make sure you check it at the same circumstances. So if you, you know, if you typically check it after it's been running, you wait 10 minutes and check it, keep checking it like that. Or if you check it ice cold, keep checking it like that. Uh, that'll give you a little bit more accurate reading because these engines do typically hold a little bit of oil in the, uh, in the top of the engine. 
All right, guys, uh, this is the interior of the F-150. Um, this is the XLT uh, 302A package, so it's their luxury package. Um, as you can see, you get the big screen with the navigation. Navigation with Apple CarPlay really isn't necessary anymore, so you can save yourself $800, but it's probably going to be hard to find a 302A package that doesn't come with the navigation. So if you don't want navigation, you're going to have to... Um, order your truck instead of picking one off the lot uh, as far as the touch controls everything is snappy it works quick it works easy you switch easy between your phone navigation your apps Apple CarPlay works really easily you plug your phone in um, and your apps pop up but Google Maps Apple Maps all that pops up it's quick it's snappy I haven't ever had any issues with it uh, the leather steering wheel is an upgrade uh, typically in the XLTs, you get the neoprene steering wheel. This leather steering wheel has held up very well over the course of a year. It's still it's still nice and soft. There's no peeling, no issues with it. All my button controls work fine. Have any issues with that? You can see that's the lifetime, the 18.4. That's the lifetime miles per gallon on the truck. Uh, these newer F-150s do a whole lot better than the older ones. Uh, I remember growing up, we had early 2000s and late 90s F F-150s, and it was 10, 12 miles a gallon. These have twice the power and get twice the fuel economy. Uh, it's not uncommon if I'm doing 60, 65 to get 20-something miles a gallon running down the interstate. Um, with the 302A package, you get the padded uh, center console, which is held up very well. And there's no peeling, no cracking. The stitching is holding up well. Uh, the seats are holding up well. I don't have any issues with the seats. They're very comfortable for long drives. Um, we added the WeatherTechs. Uh, they've had, they held up well. The only issue that's pretty common with WeatherTechs is the ability to get the black back to them to, to where they don't look uh, faded and, and worn out. Uh, WeatherTech sells a cleaner conditioner online and it's a two bottle system. One's a cleaner and one's a conditioner. It works extremely well. Um, it is kind of expensive. I think it was like 20 or $30 for that, but you do get probably, I'd say five to six cleanings out of it. Um, and it does, it doesn't leave them greasy. They're not slippery, but they still have that black look like they did when, they, when you first got them. Uh, the back of the vehicle is uh, extremely roomy. Uh, the seats fold up. I've got the full mat WeatherTech on the back. The seats are easy to move up and down. You pull a lever, the seats drop. Uh, simple one, one arm use to, to uh, raise and, and, and lower them. Uh, the doors have held up extremely well. I don't have any issues with rattles. Uh, the, the cabin is extremely quiet going down the road. There's hardly any road noise. Uh, all in all, this truck has held up very well. And <clears throat> beyond the few issues I've had with it, uh, with potentially a little bit of oil burn, but it's nothing excessive, you know, maybe a half a quarter over the course of an oil change. I do at the moment, I am having to run mid-grade gas in it, running regular gas, uh, shell, not uh, not knockoff brand or anything like that. Uh, I was having an issue with a little bit of uh, pre-ignition under low, low throttle. If you got on the throttle a little bit and you got it above 1800, 2000 RPMs, it would stop doing it. Uh, I put mid-grade in it, it stopped. Um, I'm not sure what the issue is with that or you know, the way that the cam timing works. Um, but other than that, I haven't even had any issues with it. The 10 speed it has in it shifts extremely smooth now that I have it broke in. The first five or 6,000 miles, it, it was a little, it did hunt a little bit. It didn't have the smoothest shifts, but now the clutch packs have broke in. Everything's kind of meshed together. It shifts good, it drives good, it gets great fuel economy. Um, I haven't had any issues with the four-wheel drive system. I've actually put it on a lift and thoroughly inspected that, engaged the four-wheel drive, disengaged it, checked the hubs. I don't have any issues with hub disengagement or anything like that. Um, another common issue people like to complain about is the wheels on these, the wheels uh, chipping, or the chrome, the chrome cladding coming off. Uh, the way I found to mitigate that is, is whenever I do an oil change, I do a tire rotation every 5,000 miles. Whenever I have the wheels off, I go ahead and just put a coat of wax on them real quick, let them sit while I'm changing my oil, wipe them down, put them back on, 
and it keeps that chrome cladding soft to keep it from peeling and cracking. I haven't had any issues with the lug nut swelling or anything like that. Uh, they are soft. Um, when I first got the truck and I did my first, my, my very first uh, rotation, I did, I had the wrong size of lug nut on there or a socket and it did, it rounded one of them a little bit. Uh, but now that I found the right size, it, they work fine. I haven't had any issues with them swelling. Um, all in all, this has been a, a, I've been extremely happy with this truck. It drives good, it shifts good, good fuel economy, it's quiet. Um, if anybody's in the market, is anybody's in the market for an F-150, uh, I encourage you to get one. Um, they're very good trucks. I appreciate you watching.